I, my father had the, the, the unfortunate uh, fact that my mother was a, a doctor, my sister is a doctor, my brother is a surgeon, my other sister is a nurse, and he said, in fact, to me, I am the only doctor in this house. He had a DSC in chemistry, and uh, he has shut us up periodically when non-medical, at least medical nonsense was discussed at the, at the table. Now, Gary Stack read out some nonsense earlier on from about the Sam McGuire. I just have to point out to Gary that uh, the Sam McGuire, as far as I know, is, is up sort of northish somewhere. And uh, there's, a, there's a doctor, a friend of mine, who shall be named, is called John Higgins, who's, who's, who's very pleased with the fact that he's up there, and I think that Kerry or Cork or any other country is going to have a fierce job getting it back down, but hopefully one or other of us will do so in the coming year. Which reminds me that there were three patients uh, of Gary's walking along by the lake there uh, a few weeks ago, and uh, they were saying, How are you getting on, Johnny? I'm not too bad. How are you? Not too bad, Perry. Uh, were you with the doctor Barnes? I was with the doctor. Yeah. Dr. Stack, he's lovely. Gary Stack, lovely doctor. He's fierce time for everyone, grand doctor. He's really. What were you there for, says Johnny, to, to, to Pedro, and Pedro says, well, I tell you, no, my problem, he says, is, is, is the sight. Jesus, I can't see nothing. I can't see beyond my nose. He says, right, says Nicky Jones, that way. And what's the problem? He says, I don't know, I have glasses, but it's a waste of time. I can't see nothing. Well, I tell you, no, says Pedro, I could see for a mile. Do you see way there, no, below that tree? Below that again? There are two people talking there. You can see them, but I can. Oh, fantastic, I said. Jesus, you look, he says, uh, Thank you, George, to death. And he said, what's the other fellow? How are you? I was in because of the hearing. I can't hear nothing. And I tried, there was, they thought it was the wax. And they cleaned out the ears, you know, took the wax. And I said, can you, jeez, I can hear, I could hear two pins drop a half a mile from you. He says, you're sure, lucky. He says, so what are you in with Dr. Gary for? He says, my problem is the memory. The memory. Oh, Jimmy, so what do you know? No, he says, I was, uh, Myself and the missus, like, I mean, I know I'm old and she's not as old as me. I could be still like a bit of the old, uh, how's your father? Like, and and uh, this night uh, we, we said we'd go up to bed and we'd have a little bit of, uh, you know, the little dee 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 And I, got in, I was getting into bed and I fell out of the bed onto the floor. And my little told me, she says, Mickey Joe, you've had it now. He says to guys, I couldn't remember whether I had or I had. <laughs> The last few days have told me that the car curlers are going on strike again. <laughs> Extremely nice people that you meet. And I said, that's, and of course I knew bloody well from the outside, this was a wire pull of some sort. And they said, no, 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 genuine. I said, this is your only technique. No, no, it's true. What's the problem? Oh, they want Brian Cody to resign as the coach, is the answer. Gary Stack is one of the fellows who came out with this. But, uh, which reminds me, um, in Cork on our side, they, they, they does, they does uh, funerals very well. Like, and there was this Shawley up in uh, St. Mount Nebo's Avenue, off Drona Broha. And uh, she was married to a fellow now, and he was a no good langer then, if you know what I mean. Drank morning, noon, and night, never gave a penny to her, and anyway, he died. So, of course, like everyone had to come in for the wake, and Johnny was laid out in the bed above the stairs, and they all came in, sorry, Maggie, if you have troubles, thank you, thank you very much. And she had the black, everything on, and she was crying and everything. Up they went and they said a few prayers and all this kind of stuff was going through a while, cups of tea and biscuits and this one then came and says, uh, I feel sorry for your troubles now and he looks gorgeous, he looks gorgeous. <laughs> and she says, yes, she says, thanks for the watch, it's just awful really. And she put the stand aside of this guy as you know. And she says, don't tell me this. There's only one thing that, that's bothering me. She says, what's that? I put my hand on his little hand with the rose leaves and you know something? He was very warm. She says, Maggie, I heard Pordy's going out this door tonight. <laughs> now, I suspect, I suspect by now I've, I've gone beyond Donald Coffey's brief uh, time frame. So there are a few other things I must do and I'm pleased to do. In acknowledging the presidents, I think we should also acknowledge the trustees and Particularly, I suppose, to mention again, Joe Sullivan, who's with us, who celebrated his 80th birthday on Thursday. <laughs> we acknowledge the work done over the years by the chairs of the committees, GP, consultant, NCSG, public health, 
the International Affairs Committee members in, in their European representative roles, and all of those who have contributed to make the organisation such a strong body as it is. Um, but singularly, I think we should acknowledge and thank the great work of our Secretary General, George McNeese, and the staff of the IMO. If, if, uh, uh, if George would be so good as to approach the desk here, Bonnie, I'll, 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 I'll give him a small little token of all our appreciation, and maybe I'll come halfway to meet him. I was strictly told not to mention anyone else by name because I'd offend, but when I we give this tribute to George, we're also giving it to all his, his other colleagues in, in the office. But in particular to thank Maria, who was responsible for putting that collage together uh, that you enjoyed. <laughs> And uh, talking about Kilkenny, just and the cats, one small story. There was this fella and he hated uh, cats, couldn't stand them. And uh, the wife came home one day and she had a cat. <laughs> Allurophobia is the answer. <laughs> we couldn't catch us. Now, at our table, we knew this immediately. The rest of you can fill in accordingly, okay? But anyway, this kind of hated cats, but the wife came home with the cat and said, Jeez, I can't stand cats, I have to get rid of the cat. So he drove 50 miles from home, threw the cat out of the car, and went home. And of course, when he arrived home, the shedding cat was already at home before him. So I said, Master. So the next day he said, Okay, I'll drive 150 kilometers from home. Again, said to the cat, No, you can shine off, no, that's enough of you, good luck. So threw the cat out, drove home, and of course, the cat was home before him again. So I said, I can't, geez, I, I just can't live with the cats. I get 250 kilometers next day, drove, threw the cat out. And he rang home and he says to the wife, is the cat home? Oh, she is, he is, yeah. Put her on, will you? I'm lost, he says. <laughs> So could you all be upstanding, raise or charge, as the expression is, your glasses, and we drink a toast to the Irish Medical Organisation. Ryan Gormila Mahavid and enjoy the rest of the night. Thank you.